Welcome to Resiliency Radio, your go-to podcast for the most cutting-edge insights in functional and integrative medicine. I'm Dr. Jill, your host, and each episode we delve into the heart of healing and personal transformation. Join us as we connect with renowned experts, thought leaders, and innovators who are at the forefront of medical research and practice. Our mission, to empower you with knowledge and inspiration, aiding you in your journey to optimal health. Today is no different. I have my dear friend and uh, expert in mold, mycotoxins, chronic illness. We're going to dive dive deep into all of the questions and hopefully answers that you might want regarding the complexities and chronic illness that we see in our society, whether you're facing it or a friend or a family member. Hopefully today you will get the answers that you're looking for. Dr. Nafisa Parpia is a board-certified naturopathic doctor and director of naturopathic medicine at Gordon Medical. Throughout her career in holistic medicine, she has focused on treating patients with complex chronic illness. She specializes in tick-borne illnesses, Lyme disease, environmentally acquired illness, mold and mycotoxin illness, autoimmunity, fibromyalgia, long-haul COVID, and chronic fatigue syndrome. She uses cutting-edge laboratory testing and deep intuition applied to the full range of scientific data to create comprehensive treatment plans that are highly personalized. Dr. Nafisa, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always such a pleasure to be with you. I agree. It's just so wonderful to connect with another human being that uses the science and the mind and the intuition and pulls it all together. Um, Before we start into the complexities and chronicities of illness, tell us a little bit about how did you get into naturopathic medicine and how has been your journey to arrive here? Yeah, so a, a long time ago, many lifetimes ago feels like I was, you know, I was doing fundraising and it paid my bills, but I just was not tapping into my human potential. I just knew there was so much more for me to do in the world and and to help people. And I became a yoga instructor. That was wonderful, but still I knew there was more. So I went to naturopathic medical school and they trained us to be great primary care physicians and I was so happy to get that training and to be teaching yoga at the same time. Still, I knew there was more. Um, I wasn't finding that I was able to go deep with people. Maybe I could help people with the common cold or um, with, you know, with, with, with some basic, basic primary care. And I was actually aching to, to, to work with people in a very deep level of healing. And so I sought out Dr. Dietrich Klinghart while I was in Seattle at Bastyr, and I sought him out for, um, for, for, for learning from. So I took all of his courses and I ended up, um, after I graduated, spending a year in his clinic, learning from him and his top doctors there. And I remember sitting on a table once when he was with a patient and I was covered in goosebumps and I knew this is my this is my patient population. These are the people who I'm going to be working with, people with complex chronic illness, the mysterious illnesses. And so it was really this this deep longing within me to work with 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 people in their human condition and in healing that led me here. So then I sought out all kinds of other training to learn this that we're not taught in we're not taught in medical school or naturopathic school. So that was my journey leading me there, here. Well, I am so glad you're here today because you and I share this really deep, profound understanding that there's science and there's our analytical mind, and we love to use that. And you're one of the most brilliant people I know. But at the other side of that is our deep wisdom and intuition. And there's a huge piece, I feel, with these complex chronic illnesses that we need to bring in that heart-centered medicine. And let's just start there. What is it about your approach to medicine and how do you bring in that heart-centered approach? Because you and I know that some powerful answers and insights come there. And it's just such always a pleasure to talk to you because not everyone lives in that space and sees patients with that authenticity. It's true. We both, you and I both live in this space. And so then we bring it to our patients and you and I both use a lot of scientific knowledge, a lot of data, looking at people's biochemistry, looking at their genes, looking at their microbiome, looking at their toxins. We can get onto all of that after, but I love that you want to start this conversation this way, talking about the heart of medicine. How do we approach all of these biochemical things 
with heart. And, and one thing I know is that when a patient, any patient comes with complex chronic illness, they're in a, a very sacred, sacred time of their life. It's like we're walking on holy ground as we're working with these patients. They're, they're in a stage of, of healing, but we know it's not just physical healing. When, when the body is, 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 is speaking so loudly in so many different systems, it's really also about the spirit speaking, the mind speaking, the whole being, the whole being, the body is giving us messages on the spirit and on the mental level that want to be heard and that want to be integrated in with the biochemical healing that we also bring. So for me, it's really listening to that patient and understanding what they're, what it is that's just aching to be heard and to be seen in this world. And, and, and we just move from there. Some people have a spiritual practice. Some people don't, um, and really it doesn't matter as, as long as it's helping that person find the depths of who they are and their own self-value, their own self-love. But I also know that we have to, we as doctors, I know you do the same thing. We have, I have my own practice to keep myself clear so that I'm not bringing my own filter, my own traumas, my own issues to the table because us doctors are human as well. So we need to keep ourselves clear put our own stuff to the side and approach our patients as the clear vessel the, the, we, the best, the best that we can be in order to really be there and hear and understand. And, and I, I pray, so I pray for divine guidance to show me the path for each patient. So well said, and I could not agree more with you. And it just reminded me, I pulled out this quote I heard this morning. Um, it said, it was, it was a Russian lady who had been through trauma and war and lost her husband and her son and just like over and over and over, like difficult, difficult, way worse than you and I have maybe ever faced. And she said, every trouble wants to draw you to the very best uh, sorry, draw the very best of you back into the world. So every trouble wants to draw the very best of you back into the world. And I like, I wrote it down and I just, I hadn't planned to share that, but it makes so much sense of what you're saying is so often these difficulties, these chronic illnesses, and you and I are in the field of medicine. So we're dealing with complex chronic illness that often takes us off track from maybe our plans for career or plans for marriage or plans for having children or whatever kind of thing that we think is the next step. And we get ill from something, something's happening to change that, but it's actually drawing us into the world to really fully participate. So I love that you said that because truly um, I've found I've had a lot of illness in my life and illness, if you view it as a teacher, it can be so transformative instead of disruptive because it's hard to face it. And it's really hard when we start asking why, but I think there's better questions. Like maybe we can say, how can this transform us instead of just why is this happening? Right. And patients know it's very often I'll tell them, you know, at some point, I think you're going to tell me what the silver lining is. I think you're going to tell me why. A lot of times people say, you know what? I already know why. I already know that I'm becoming wiser. I'm becoming stronger. I'm I'm becoming more me. And even though I've hated this, this being sick, I'm really grateful for it because it's lifted me to this level of healing on all levels. And I would say almost every single patient who's come out the other end from, from being sick to wellness, they've they've said this. I, I can't think of a patient actually who hasn't, who hasn't thanked the illness at the end of the day because they're walking stronger, they're walking healed in every aspect. They're a different person. Yeah. I love that because if we can see it as transformative, it truly can be some of the best things that happen, even though it's it, it involves suffering. It involves difficulties. This is not easy. We're not saying that you should just walk and skip along and say everything's great because it's not, no. but the um, understanding that there's deeper meaning. Now, before we go into actual chronic, complex, Lyme, mold, long COVID, I want to ask you a quick question. And I'd love to just hear, you mentioned just uh, centering yourself and your own practices to kind of be in that place. Are there any just practical day-to-day -day things that you try to incorporate for your own health and mental and spiritual well-being every day that would be helpful for our listeners to hear? Yeah. So I, I meditate every day and um and I say I say prayers and I make my prayers very, very specific. 
Um, I actually have a spiritual teacher um, from, from two, two of them actually from indigenous healing practices. And I remember once uh, one of them teaching me about a decade ago, really say the fine print of your prayers and connect with God or the great spirit or whatever someone wants to call it consciousness or that deeper sense within you, if you don't believe in, in that, but, but to really connect with consciousness and to say the fine print, like you're looking at the, at the back of a, of a shampoo bottle or instruction bottle and say it very clearly to yourself. And, and that's what I do. I I'm, I'm very clear on what my prayers are and in manifesting them very specifically. And, and I meditate also um, using silent mind as much as I can to, to focus on my breath so a combination of both of those things, also connecting with nature, connecting with the earth as much as possible as well. Great tips and so practical that we can all access. So let's shift now to the complex chronic illnesses in your bio. And one thing we'll mention links to at the end of the show, but you've got a, a summit coming up and give us the title of that and then stay tuned for links wherever you're watching this podcast if you want to see more of Dr. Nafisa. But what's the title? It's called Cracking the Chronic Illness Code, Ticks, Toxins, and Mold. And I'm very excited you're on the summit, so everyone can watch you too here. So it's, it's great. Hey, everybody. I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith, is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you wanna get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com there, you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. It'll be so fun. Yeah, yeah we have another yeah. interview. So, um, yeah. so let's dive into that and let's just start with the first one. So ticks, so tick-borne infections, ticks, Lyme disease. Some people who are listeners are very, very familiar with this. Others are not. Um, maybe let's just start with the framework of like, how often are you seeing this as part of the chronic illness and uh, how does it interplay with the other things you mentioned, environmental toxins and even long COVID? Yeah. So this is something I see almost every day in my practice. We're definitely, we are a Lyme clinic, but so much more than Lyme, um, environmental medicine. And, and when someone comes in and they have a diagnosis of chronic Lyme, or say they don't even have a diagnosis of chronic Lyme, they just have a mystery diagnosis, but there's a lot of pain in their body, mysterious symptoms. I'm testing them for Lyme, but I'm testing them for many, many other things at the same time. So I think that people people like to think, oh, it's just Lyme, right? And they're treat my Lyme. But I tell my patients, when you've been sick for a long time and you went to infectious disease and you, or you went to a Lyme literate doctor and it didn't work, or it backfired, there's there's something else that's going on. This isn't just Lyme. So I tell them there's usually five reasons people get sick, five root causes, infections, toxins, structural integrity issues, lifestyle, and diet. So when it comes to infections in these patients, there's usually multiple different infections. It's very common that there's tick-borne illnesses. I'm testing for that. So that could be Lyme, Bartonella, Babesia, Ehrlichia, um, Rickettsia. Very common people have all of these infections from the tick, but they also typically have um, parasites. They have fungus issues. They have a high viral load, um, different, different, different viruses, different bacteria, and in different systems of the body. So the genital urinary system, the gut, um, possibly the lungs, colonizations in the sinuses, in, in the nerves, the, the, the nervous system and the connective tissue, if it is tick-borne disease. So they've got all these different layers of infection in different systems of the body. Then they often have environmental toxins. I know you know all of this, but for our audience, right, I just want them to understand what, what we see every day. So heavy metals, 
It's very, very common. Glyphosate, mycotoxins, um, pesticides, solvents, very common. Structure integrity issues. I'm usually seeing two different extremes. So people with tight tissues, tight fascia. When that's happening, there's not optimal circulation or not optimal lymphatic flow. Now, a lot of our patients also have lax ligaments. They, they just come in that way genetically. They're that way. But if they have mast cell activation syndrome, those chemicals for the mast cells are tenderizing their ligaments. So imagine this ligament here that's holding up the brainstem. If that gets lax, there's pressure on the brainstem. So we, we see people with cranial cervical instability. Now, lifestyle, I'm talking about sleep, but I'm also talking about trauma, adverse childhood events, the trauma of being ill, and then diet. Most of our patients have dial diet dialed in by the time they've come to us, but all their life, they've probably had the standard American diet, food wrapped in plastic, not organic. I tell my patients, if you have just one of these issues going on and it's been chronic six months or longer, chances are you're going to see some pathologies. But most of these patients have all five of these going on at the same time. And it's been a minimum of six months, usually years. Now it becomes a very personalized thing. We've got um, inflammation and immune dysregulation, actually immune dysregulation first from all five of these issues, creating inflammation. That inflammation then meets the genes and we get these secondary illnesses, chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID, fibromyalgia, chronic Lyme. Those are secondary illnesses, but they become the person's own expression, actually. It's more now about how the person, how the body, how the mind, how the spirit, the whole being has reacted, has responded more even so than the triggers once they've been sick for a while, actually. What a great, clear, I don't know if I've ever heard such a just concise, clear, like a, a we, I can picture the poster, right? Where all these things are coming together and it makes so much sense. And so hopefully those of you listening are seeing yourself maybe in some of those places. What I would love to ask you for the sake of our listeners is say someone comes in and they have a history of Bartonella and Lyme. They've had mold in their environment. They have structural issues with hypermobility and they have, maybe they have the diet somewhat dialed in with a gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free diet, not perfect as far as timing or resting, but this whole thing, where would you start? Give us just a little bit of a rundown on how you'd approach that patient. Yes. So I usually like to start with what's downstream first. So I think of all the, the root causes, right? Infections, toxins, lifestyle, structure, integrity, and diet. So I'm often starting with the, well, I was about to say immune dysregulation, but really the first place I start is one of the first places you and I just started with this conversation, which is the heart. Really knowing who, who is the person in front of me? Where is their heart? Where are they in their life? What do they want? Can they picture themselves being well? If they can't, then I know that we're starting in a different place than somebody who can see themselves being well. Some people are afraid to be well. So really understanding who is in front of me, what are their fears? What are their hopes? What are their dreams? What are their goals? What emotional and spiritual state are they in? In addition to what physical state they're in, so I'm starting there. A lot of the healing work actually starts there. We have healers that we work with, or I might be doing the work with them. And when it comes to the biochemistry, I'm starting with working on immune regulation first. So most of our patients have, as a downstream effect, immune dysregulation, meaning they've got a hyperactive immune system on one side and a weak immune system on the other side. So on the one hand, they've got autoimmune conditions rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's, lupus, Sjogren's, for example, they have mast cell activation syndrome. I'm sure there's patients saying, that's me, right? So they've got this hyperactive immune system. On the other hand, they've got a weak immune system. They can't mount the appropriate immune responses to kill off the multiple chronic infections that they have, or their immune system is more permissive to infections that we're commonly exposed to, or Infections that are dormant, for example, the herpes family of viruses like Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus, 
they've been dormant, but something comes in, comes along, maybe COVID, and the inflammatory cytokine flare wakes up those dormant viruses. So it's it's common that these people have this hyperactivity and weakness at the same time in their immune system. And I'm working to regulate that. That's one of the first things I do because I know that if, if I were to go after their chronic infections first or detoxifying them first, I'm just gonna increase inflammation. It just comes with the territory. We kill infections, we're gonna cre create inflammation. But these patients are already in a highly inflamed state. They're stuck in cell danger response one, right? So. Inflammation is meant to be transient, but with these patients, their their immune system doesn't know what transient means when it comes to inflammation because they're stuck in creating an inflammatory process, which was originally to protect the bodies, to contain the insults, but their bodies don't know how to stop. So I'm working on stopping that inflammatory process because when I kill the infections, I don't want to contribute to, to more inflammation. I tell my patients, it's like I'm, I'm putting... I'm packing new soil into your garden because I'm about to pull out some nasty weeds. And if I start to do that now, we're going to create landslides. So let's set the stage first. Get your body ready for this. So I'm using a lot of peptide therapies to modulate their immune response. Other downstream effects I'm seeing is hormonal dysregulation, like I know you're seeing in your patients all the time. So working on their, their hormones, uh, working on the terrain of their system so that when it comes time to work on the, the big root causes, they can handle it. And that's that's where we start. That makes so much sense. And I love, because it is true. And whether you're listening or you're a doc like you and I are, if you start to just blow up the infections, which we can do, um, they're in a world of hurt and they're not ready to, their body just can't handle that toxic load and that. So I really like the other thing I heard in your story, as far as how you approach patients is you're creating a space for them to feel seen and heard first. And I think what you're doing is actually creating safety, right? Like that is such a core of creating that bond, that, that connection to your practitioner. And so if you're out there listening and you don't have a doctor who can sit with you and really listen and you feel heard, you probably need to find someone different because honestly being heard and listened to and, and feeling safe, like you're under their care is so core, right? And let's just digress for a moment and talk about the safety, because if the body isn't feeling safe, there's no amount of healing that can take place, right? It's so true. So it, it's, it's up to us, right, to to initiate that that safe space because then the patient will tell you everything and we need to hear everything Yeah, without judgment. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, I love that because I felt like as you were talking, that's such a foundation and you're just, you know, going through because that's what you do. But I wanted listeners to hear this is really transformational. I feel like the secret weapon and I'm sure your clinic and mine is like just unconditional love and acceptance, like creating a foundation where the patient truly feels, and I'm sure you've had this as well, where patients are literally in tears because doc, no one's ever listened to me. No one's ever really heard. And that ability to feel seen and heard is at the core of healing. So I just it didn't is. want to bust yeah, over yes, that. Yes. People say that, well, this is the first time I felt heard. I felt listened. It's the first time I have hope. Yeah. yeah. And you know, what a blessing it is, right, Jill? To it is. It's like the joy oh. of why I go to work, right? And hopefully yeah. if you're listening, you've either experienced this or you're about to, because there's no more powerful healing than just truly feeling understood. Yes. So and, we talked about healing. Ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So we talked about obviously kind of how they come, you're doing the train and um, there's something that, that you've shared and uh, uh, is so powerful in the pre-tox. Let's talk a little bit about what is that term mean and uh, how do you go about doing a pre-tox? Yeah. So just like we need to prepare the patient for treating chronic infections, I'm also at the same time preparing them for detoxification. So sometimes we use substances when, when it's appropriate to pull toxins outside of the cells. So chemicals um, like pesticides, glyphosate, mycotoxins, they bioaccumulate in our fat cells and metals bioaccumulate in the cells of our organs and lead likes to bioaccumulate in, uh, in the bones. And so we can use certain medications to pull the toxins out of the cells so that we can then flush them out of our body, flush them out through the organs of elimination, the liver, the kidneys, the gut, the skin. Now, before we start to do a cellular detox, we wanna make sure that those organs of elimination are 
prepared, they're ready to handle a load. And also I want to, I want to clear up um, toxins that could be floating out, floating around in the blood as well, because they do. And so I'm um, again, setting the terrain. So giving herbs to support the organs of elimination, looking at what toxins might just be floating around the blood or the urine. If there are toxins floating around, then, and it's at a certain level that I'm thinking there's an acute exposure and I want to find out what that acute exposure is and stop that before we even start to do a cellular detox, because we could do cellular detox till the cows come home. But if they've got an acute exposure, it's just not going to work. They're going to keep getting exposed. So it's understanding what's happening in their system before we can even start to, well, in their organs specifically, before we can start to pull the toxins out. A lot of people might have chronic UTIs. That's, that's not the right time to detoxify them. I want to pre-tox them by supporting the genital urinary system if, if that's an issue. Or a lot of people have mast cell activation syndrome, and I want to calm down the immune system because I know when I start to detoxify them, their bodies are going to respond poorly to um, two things, to, to the toxins as we pull them out of the cells, but also to a lot of the herbs or medications we might give to help with detox. So it's working on the person system by system, exploring system by system and working on it systematically like that, to then prepare them for detox. So helpful. Um, and let's just pause and give listeners a practical, um, what are some of the things that people could do at home maybe before they're still, maybe they have a practitioner like you or I out there, but that they could just, when I think of like sauna or Epsom salt baths, and I always learn from my naturopathic friends, because you guys have so many tools. What are some of the tools that people could practically try and do just for pretox or gentle detox in their day-to-day -day life? Yeah, sweating for sure. But some of our patients have a hard time sweating, have a hard time in the sauna, uh, maybe because they have mass cell activation syndrome and the heat is too much for them, or the sauna just mobilizes too many toxins. So probably you tell them also, just start for 10, 15 minutes if you can't handle that. One of the things I wanna make sure is that the patient isn't constipated. A lot of patients come to us with constipation and a, a simple thing to do to help with constipation. You want to talk to us for sure. If, if simple things like some magnesium um, or some more fiber or more water is not helping, then, um, then we need to explore that more, but, but usually people can, can help themselves um, with, with their constipation. If they're not too sick at first, eating an organic diet, um, having clean, uh, green products, personal products, or, or makeup. Those are good first steps. Yeah. I love that. The clean air, clean water, clean food, which is so foundational of any sort yeah. of detox or detox. Um, let's talk just briefly. We mentioned long COVID and unfortunately, because it affected so many millions of people, um, I've seen statistics up to one in five, maybe higher are affected. Um, how do you see post COVID affecting people with chronic complex illness? Give us a little framework of that. Yeah. So What's very interesting is our patients who were who were our patients prior to the pandemic and during the pandemic, we actually thought, oh no, our patients are, are, are so sick. They've already got complex chronic illness. They're gonna end up with long COVID. And I'm sure this happened with you too. Your patients did not end up with long right. COVID, right? Because we were already pressing on those multitude of infections. We were already detoxifying them. We were already, we already working on the inflammatory pathways in these patients. So along comes COVID and they're okay. They do just fine. It, it, it's the people who were not our patients prior, right? They, they come in, they've got long COVID. They've never been sick before. You know, maybe they were tired or maybe they tended to, to catch colds often, or maybe they had some digestive issues but nothing major. They could they could just go along their lives just fine, but they had this low grade inflammation and maybe their immune system was keeping a lot of uh, viruses or other infections at bay. Their immune system could handle it, but then comes spike protein, then comes microclots from long COVID, then comes the inflammatory cytokine flare, and suddenly there's inflammation in the blood vessels from the microclots. Suddenly there's spike protein, possibly in the blood vessels and the organs. 
we can't measure for it yet. Well, we, we can't, we, not specifically, but we can look at some markers that give us an idea, right? And, and, and there's inflammation and suddenly infections that were dormant, they, they are suddenly at the surface, they're suddenly awake. Suddenly a person is in chronic Lyme. They didn't even know they got bit by a tick, but they've got the symptoms. It makes me want to test. So I do. And I find that I find, I find the tick-borne diseases. I find HHV6. I find mycoplasma. I find um, Epstein-Barr virus or cyto cytomegalovirus. It's not usually an or, it's usually and all of these bugs. And then we look for the toxins and yes, the toxins were there, but yeah. their immune system could handle it. Now suddenly they can't and- that's long COVID in yeah. our patient population. That's a great framework because it truly is. Is like, I always think of it as load. We've talked about toxic load before. And it's like one more thing that breaks the straw that breaks the camel's back. And often people who were going along, okay, it was just this one more thing or one more episode. And it doesn't really determine as far as the severity of the COVID. I've actually seen probably more patients who are suffering after a mild case of COVID than yeah. some of the early kind of really severe cases. So it doesn't necessarily go along with how severe your COVID was. Right. Right. You know, there, as we're speaking, I'm thinking about something that Dr. Robert Navio shared with yes. Eric, Dr. Gordon, and I really recently, and it's about how cr uh, complex chronic illnesses are really about the person's own expression of illness. So here we are talking about these chronic illnesses and that, and then these secondary illnesses that result as a bunch of primary root causes. And so we, we meet with him often and um, we're very close to him. And something he said recently really, really stuck with me. And he, he said, in almost all of these acquired complex chronic illnesses, chronic Lyme, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, mast cell activation syndrome, he said, there's no one gene responsible for the same diagnosis in different people. So he said that it's hundreds of different genes and hundreds of different biochemical variables acting in a coordinated fashion that that makes somebody arrive at these diagnoses and they're different for each person. So he was looking at different metabolites and he was saying, so basically he was looking at people with the same diagnosis and their different abnormal metabolites. And he found that 25% of the chemicals were the same in people with the same diagnosis. And the other 75% of the chemicals were different. They were unique to each person. And so really by the time someone has a complex chronic illness, the illness has become their own, their own stick, their own expression. And so then going back to treatment, the treatment really is about personalization, right? And I know you do this, I do this. It's even though we talked about how do we first start, right? We start with making the person feel safe. We start with immune modulation and nervous system regulation. At the same time, we also know that we're looking at somebody whose expression is totally different than, than the, the patient we just saw and the patient we're about to see, even though they have the same diagnosis. And so we've got to make it so personalized. I love that we're kind of wrapping in this direction because that is such a core. I see, I'll just go off on just a moment. A lot of times on social media and people who maybe don't have a medical degree are, are promoting out there, hey, here's this protocol, spend this large amount of money to do this protocol because it'll fix everyone. And you and I know, I'll just warn you if you're a listener out there and comment if you've seen this or heard this or even been susceptible to it. If someone says there's a one size fits all, it costs this much money and we'll fix you and everybody does the same thing. You and I know, Dr. Nephi said that that does not work and that does not really get to the root cause. And it's funny because even in my um, you know, work as teacher and educator and all of this, same as you, um, often I asked to give kind of protocols and I'm always like, there's no protocol, right? There's no <laughs> protocol. The core of this work is very, very personalized. Like, yes, the habits like you know, uh, clean air, clean water, clean food, those can be for all of us. But as far as really getting well, this absolutely requires a unique and personalized approach. And I love that you mentioned that and emphasize that. You know, when our new patient coordinator first started, you know, first started that role, she would say to me, so I've got a new patient calling in. They're wondering if you do the Sears protocol. For those of you listening, you don't know it's Dr. Shoemaker's mold protocol, or do you do the ILADS protocol? And I, and I told her, her name is Rachel. Rachel, tell them that we have our own protocols and it's unique for each individual. 
no, I don't do that protocol yes. Yes. <laughs> because it, 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 yeah, it's not going to work for our patients. Some people, these yes. things will work for, but we're talking about a different patient population. They, they've tried that. The illness has become so, so personalized. We've been going on for so long, at least six months that we can't just throw a protocol on it anymore. Yeah, I love that we're talking about this because again, what's sad for me is you and I see this all the time out there, these promises that are really, we. I, I look and I just see and I'm like, oh, I hope no one falls for that because that is not going to work. Um, and it doesn't mean you can't get started on your own. It doesn't mean you can't learn. I'm not saying you have to pay an expensive doctor or that, but I'm just saying be cautious. There's no one size fits all. There just isn't in this complex chronic world. No, I'm so happy you're saying this. Yeah, you too. It's like so important because I get actually a little upset when people I feel like are being uh, misled because I have this heart for the patient who's suffering and they're wanting to fix and they're wanting a protocol. But the truth is there's just not, that's not. No, it, it upsets me too. Yeah. It really does. When people are given this promise, right, follow the right. protocol, you yep. can follow this mold protocol or this gut protocol yeah. or this mast cell protocol, follow it. And, and you're going to come out the other end and Right. They do, then they end up in our doors. They've wasted yes. money. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, you have seen amazing uh, reversals and people getting well. And so in the last minute or two here, what kind of hope or inspiration or encouragement would you like to give our listeners about if they are facing complex and chronic illness? Mm -hmm. So there are there are doctors out there like like Dr. Jill, like myself. Who, who who really are here for you and who have a lot of experience in this and it takes it does take a lot of experience i know i know that there are there are there, there are other doctors out there who may not have the experience but who, who who want to be able to treat complex chronic illness and bless their hearts i'm i'm, I'm happy they're trying but they, you need a lot of mentorship, a lot of training, a lot of experience. So the hope is that there are doctors like us. In fact, we're both on the board of ICI, the International Society of Environmentally Acquired Illness. I can tell you that all the other doctors who are on that board have a lot of experience. You can trust them as well. Um, and, and there are doctors who are trained through ILADS and through ICI. And that's where you want to find your doctors who've got the experience and the appropriate training. And um, Dr. Jill and I turn patients around every day, all the time. It's what we live for. I know it's what you live for. It's what I live for. It's our life's work. And so we're here for you. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Thanks for mentioning ICI. We both love that organization. They do a great job training. It's nonprofit. So we're just saying that just for the benefit of your listeners. Um, so you've got this summit coming up and that's one of the things, one of the reasons why we wanted to come on. And as you're hearing this, it should be out in the next week or two. So you can sign up. It's all free. Um, tell us the name again. And then wherever you're watching, listening to this, there will be a link below. You can uh, check that out and uh, get all this great information. Tell us just a little preview of what you've got coming. Sure. It's called Cracking the Chronic Code, Ticks, Toxins, and Mold. So it's all about complex chronic illness. And it is it is so much more than ticks, toxins, and mold. It, as, as you heard Dr. Jill and I speak about today, so we talk about all the different possibilities that, that lead towards a diagnosis, but also to treatment. So it, we've got a lot of cutting edge um, answers and ideas out there for you to join us with. So Come and join us. It'll be great. Fantastic. And again, the link will be below or wherever you're watching this. Um, if you uh, need transcripts or need full links, you can find all of my episodes on my website at jillcarnian.com. You can also find all of my episodes with transcripts on YouTube on my channel. Just search my name and you'll find that. So um, depending on where you're listening. Um, Thank you again so much for being here today. Thank you for the wealth of knowledge and most of all, the heart compassion that you bring to the world in the healing space. Thank you for the same and thank you for having me here.